Hey guys, it's Alpha, and this is part three of my 5M scripting series. In today's episode, we're going to be setting up a database using MySQL and making a script to insert values into it. So we're going to be going to our server directory as usual. So TX data into the directory. And then what we're going to do from here is we actually need to go and download a resource called MySQL async. So I'll have this link in the description to this GitHub. And all you need to do is press on the green code button and then download the zip file. I'm just going to drag this into my resources folder. And then obviously you can see that it's a zipped compressed file. So I'm just going to unzip it. I'm using WinRAR to do this, but you can use uh, other applications like 7-zip. Uh, once you've uh, uncompressed it, you can just delete the compressed file. file. And what we can do is rename this file to just be MySQL async. And you can get rid of the master on the end and the 5M at the start. And that's the name that you want it to be, MySQL-async. This is just a file that actually lets you connect to MySQL. So once we've actually got that in, we need to go back into the server.cfg. And then what we need to do, just below um, adding the UDP and TCP, is add a line called set my sql underscore connection underscore string and then space in speech marks server equals 127.0.0.1 or instead of doing this ip you can just do localhost they both mean the same thing and then you can do a semicolon and then database equals and we can call this whatever we want so i'm just going to call it uh, 5m doesn't really matter another semicolon and then user id and then this will be root you can also add another semicolon on the password but i'm not going to be adding a password to mine so i'm not going to do that once you've done that you can go to a new line actually we're going to do it down here <coughs> uh, i'll just do it below these default resources we're going to start mysql async Go. we can save that and we'll just minimize it for now and now we're going to be making an actual resource to edit this so what we're going to be doing is creating a new folder i'm just going to call this one database because it's about the database and then inside of here i'm going to make a resource called mysql insert because it's inserting values into mysql i'm going to add a dash in there so you can actually read it a bit easier there we go. Now in here, we're going to do the usual. We're going to make a fxmanifest.lua. If I can spell it. There we go. And then, oh, where is it? There we go. A client.lua. And this time, we're actually going to need a server.lua as well. We haven't actually done one with a server.lua yet. But we're going to need that. There we go. So now we can go into the FX manifest. And then we're going to need to do the usual things like FX version. Cerulean. Game. GTA 5. Author. Obviously these are the things you don't need like author and description. But I always like to add them. Inserting values into a MySQL. <coughs> database version 1.0.0 just like that and then we're going to be adding client script client dot lua that says client not client there we go and then we're going to do server scripts plural with an s on the end then we're going to do curly brackets because we've got multiple server scripts so we're going to do server.lua and then we need to add a comma on there and then the next line we're going to do at mysql-async slash lib slash mysql with the capital M and SQL dot lua like that. There you go, I'll leave that on the screen so you can do that. <coughs> No, now once you've done that you can save the fx manifest and close it now we're going to go into the client 
and then we're going to be registering a net event. So we'll be called display. And then we're going to add an event handler. This will also be called display because it's the handler for that net event. And then function. And the parameter inside is argument. You can add an end to that. Now we're going to be adding a trigger event. This will be chat colon add message. We've done one of these before. But now we're going to add a name, which will be database. And then we're going to do the RGB value. So I'm just going to do 0, 0, 255. So that'll be blue. And then we're going to add argument, like so. And then that's actually all we need for the client.lua. So now we can close, close that. And then go into the server. .lua. In here, we're going to do register command. And this will be called send. Oh, whoops. Because we're going to be sending data to the database. And then I'm going to do function. And then we've got two parameters, which is source and args. We can move down the end. We're going to do local arg string this is going to be getting the arguments and turning them into a string equals table dot concatenate we just put concat and it will be args and then a space just like that and then we're going to do my sql dot async dot fetch all this is a sql um, query insert into this needs to be caps because that's commands and then we're going to do the name of our table in the database so i'm just going to call it data table and then it will be id steam name capital n steam name and data And then we'll do values at source at name at args and close that bracket then we'll do a comma move this along end that needs to be indented oh whoops like so there we go and then in here we're going to do open squiggly brackets, square bracket, oh, whoops, good there, do a gap. Open squiggly brackets, square brackets, at source equals get player identifiers source and then one comma at at name equals get player name source comma at args equals arg string whoops I've done two eyes arg string and then we'll do a comma inside of here function uh, result and then we'll do trigger trigger client event display this is triggering the net event that we registered in the client.lua called display and then the argument will be source and then the message will be do we'll do three chat color that just changes the color of the text 
and we're going to concatenate our string into that and we're going to make it white text again after that there we go so now we can save that and we can close that now we need to download exam which is this control panel i will have the link for the download in the description it's a self-explanatory you know setup wizard all you need to install though when it asks you th for things like apache mysql filezilla mercury and tomcat you only need mysql so you can just install that one and then once you've got it installed you can open up this control panel and then press start to launch mysql it should be green once it's started and you should see the port of 3306 that's the default once that's started up you can just minimize that and then you also need to install a program called Heidi SQL. I've already got it installed, but I'll also include the link to download this in the description. That's also a very self-explanatory setup. Once you've done that and you've started up MySQL in the exam control panel, you can go to Heidi SQL and it will be blank like this. You can press new and this is a database. So we're just going to call it by them. Doesn't really matter. That's just the session name, host name IP as we did earlier in the server CFG, you can do 127.0.011 or localhost. They're both the exact same thing. User ID is root. If you had a password, you can put a password in and then obviously 3306 as the port. And we can open that and it opens it up just here. As you can see, we're in the 5M session. We're going to be creating a database. So we're going to right click, create new database. And we're going to call this 5M because that's the name of the database that we did. Just leave the collation as Latin one Swedish CI. Now here we go. I'm going to go into query and we're actually going to create a MySQL query to create a table. So we're going to do create table in all caps. And then not in caps, we're going to do data table inside of these, um, I believe they're called tildes. They're not speech marks, but they're tildes. I believe. That's the key that you have to press for it to create at least. And then obviously some brackets. And then inside of that indented, we're gonna do tilde ID. Whoops, I did a tab. ID, so this is the name of one of the columns inside of the table. And the type of it is gonna be varchar, which is variable character. And then the max length of the field is going to be 50. Null, default, null, comma. And we're going to do tilde again. This one's going to be steam name. So this is like what we did in the server.cfg. We're doing the three different values. This one's also going to be a varchar. This one's going to have length of 50 as well. Null, default, null. I misspelled default. There we go. And then the last one's going to be data. This one's going to be a bar char as well, but the maximum field size of this one's going to be 255. Null default null. And we don't need a comma on this one because that's the last value. After the brackets, we're going to do collate equals. And then this one is in speech marks, not in um, tildes. Latin one underscore Swedish underscore CI. And then we're going to do engine equals inno db. Not inno, inno. There we go. And a semi semicolon. We're going to run that. Oh, yeah. We need to use database. So we're going to do use. 5M at the top. Uh, we need to do that in uh, tools, like so. Okay, so yeah, you do use 5M and then you need to put a close, uh, um, a semicolon at the end. Otherwise, it won't actually end that line. Then you just run the query. I've already done it, so it's just saying it already exists. But once you've done that, you can just refresh by doing the refresh button or right clicking it and refreshing it. Then you'll see inside of that database, you've got a table now called data, data table. So now we can go to this structure view, we can see all of the things, and we can go to data as well. As you can see, there's not actually any data inside of the folder right now, or not the folder, the table, sorry. So we can just close that for now. 
Do we want to save it? No, that doesn't matter. We can close that query. We're never going to use that again. We've already created the table. Now, what we're going to do is inside of here, as you can see, we've already got our previous resources. Just below that, we're going to do MySQL insert because that's the name of the resource we just worked on. Save that. And now we can actually start up the server and test out the resource. So I'm going to go out, go into where I start up my server and launch it up. As you can see, we can see just here, started resource MySQL insert. So we can see that it's working just fine. And now we can actually boot up 5M and join the server. So now that we're in, we can test the command. I'm doing slash send. And then we can do the data that we want. So this will just be any message. So we can do, this is a test message. As you can see, it's database in the chat. So we can see that it's done it. So now we can actually che check the database by uh, MySQL, uh, Heidi SQL, sorry. Open it up and check inside of that table. Go into data, as you can see, it's given us our ID, our Steam name, and the data. This is a test message. So as you can see, it's in inserted it into the database. We can do it again, slash send. This should be the second data entry. And if I refresh this, there you go. This should be the second data entry. So we can see it's working just fine. It's inserting the stuff into the database. And this is a perfect example of how you can insert files, uh, data into a database. You can change this all around how you want and start creating your own things that you can insert into the database. I hope this has helped you set it up, get it working, because I know when I first started with 5M, creating databases was very difficult. So I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, hit the subscribe button, press like, leave a comment, all of that. You can also join our Discord in the description. I can help you there and I'm also running a, my own 5M community so if you'd like to join that one feel free that will be linked in the description as well. As always thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.